Tonight, I want to speak to you on one of the very important parables that Jesus taught. And I've been some under some inspiration for, for some days now, studying the parables that Jesus taught and the lessons there. Amen. And one of them is what I've entitled, Occupy Till I Come. Occupy Till I Come. Now, that was a statement Jesus made, Occupy Till I Come. Till I come. Please turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 19 and the verse 11 to 27. The Bible says, While they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell them a parable. Somebody shout a parable. As I've always said, a parable is an earthly saying with a heavenly meaning. So it was one of the teaching aids of Jesus. It was the tools by which he taught. He taught using stories with deep meaning so that the people can understand. He used the culture of the day, the tradition of the day, the way of life of the people, and he used that to teach them. When he meets fishermen, he uses imagery of fishing to teach them the message. So when he found the first disciples, he told them that follow me and I will make you fishes of men so they can get it. When he met farmers, he had to use seeds, etc. to teach them the lesson. He met the woman at the well. He had to use water to reflect the message of eternal life that came in the form of water. In the same way as he was teaching the people, he realized that it was at a season where they are expecting a kingdom. The Bible says that they were expecting that he was about to establish the kingdom that they have been waiting for. They have been under Roman rule. Israel had been with occupation. They have been under occupation of the Romans for a long time and they have been desiring that they are Messiah who will come as a savior, who will come and save them from the hands of the Romans so that he will establish his kingdom. So when he said he was going to Jerusalem, they were expecting that immediately the kingdom of God will appear and the Bible says Jesus therefore used the occasion because they were thinking kingdom to give them a very vital message that is relevant for you and I this this evening. Hallelujah. While they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they assumed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately as soon as he reached the city. I'm reading this evening from the amplified version of the Holy Scriptures. Verse 12, so he said to them, a noble man went to a distant country to obtain for himself a kingdom. Take note of the word noble man and take note of the word kingdom. And then to return, take note of the word return. Hallelujah. I'm now on verse 12. Verse 13. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. In those days, a mina is is, a, well, let's say some pounds. Amen. Some currency. But a mina is equivalent to three months wages, three months salary. So this noble man who was about to leave, the Bible says he gave his servants, gave them 10 minas, one apiece, each equal to about a hundred days wages, about three months wages. And said to them, the old King James says, occupy till I come. The Amplified version says, do business with this until I return. Look at somebody and tell the person, do business with what the Lord has given to you until he returns. <laughs> Take note, until he returns. Has he returned? So until he returns, occupy yourself with what he has given. Amen. Amen. But his citizens, the residents of his new kingdom, hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we don't want this man to be a king over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that these servants to whom he had given the money be called to him, that he might find out what business they had done with the money. The first one came before him and said, Lord, your mina has made 10 more minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you proved yourself faithful 
and trustworthy in a very little thing, you shall now have authority over ten cities in my kingdom. Verse 18, the second one also came and said, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him also, and you shall take charge over five cities. Then another came and said, Lord, here is your mina which you gave to me, which I have kept laid up in a handkerchief. Other translation says, I have kept it in the earth. Hey. And the Bible says, he went on having kept the thing in the handkerchief in the earth for safekeeping. I was always afraid of you because you are a stern man. You keep, you pick up what you did not lay down and you reap what you did not sow. And the master said to the servant, I will judge and condemn you by your own words, you worthless servant. Did you really know that I was a stern man picking up what I did not lay down and reaping what I did not sow? Then why did you not at the very least put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. Then he said to the bystanders, take the mina away from him and give it to the one who now has 10 minas. And they said to him, Lord, he already has 10 minas. Jesus explained, I tell you that everyone who has because he valued the gifts that I've given to him from God and has used them wisely, more will be given him. More will be given to her. But from the one who does not have because he disregarded the gifts, the Bible says, as for that person, even what he has will be taken away from him or her. The king ended by saying, but as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in my presence. Amen. Now, this is a very important lesson for all of us. We have just celebrated Easter. The message of Easter doesn't stop on Resurrection Sunday. It carries on every day. That is the message the whole world needs. So, we shouldn't have one Easter convention powerful and it stops until next year. Then we come again and, and then wind the clock and then do another Easter. The Easter message is a message for life. Amen. We shouldn't wait until some special three days in a year and just talk about Jesus and how he went to the cross. We must talk about the cross every day. We must talk about the salvation package of Jesus Christ every day. Hallelujah. The Bible says the master went away and said, occupy yourself with what I have given to you until I return. The Bible says in John chapter 14, Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it is not true, I won't tell you that. Then he says, I will go and prepare a place for you. And when all things are ready, I will come back again. I want you to understand some very important things in what we have said, in that we have read. In the parable, a nobleman leaves a foreign country in order to be made king and then he will return. And then before he left, he gave 10 minas to Ten of his servants, which we have read. As I said, a mina was a very good sum of money, about three months wages. That means this is a very huge amount of money. Very huge amount of money. Very huge amount of money. And then the Bible says, the future king then said to these people, put this money to work until I come back. The one who made this statement is still alive. And he's expecting something from us. Then the Bible says that the man's subjects hated him and sent word to him that they would not refuse, they would not accept him as king. That is the verse 14. Later, when the man was crowned king, the Bible says he returned to his homeland and began to set things right. And the first thing he did was to call those 10 servants. Amen. The number 10 is the number of government. He called 10 people, one that he has established his kingdom. Remember, the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amen. Now, the Bible says that when he was crowned, he came back and then he called those ten servants whom he had given the minas to for them to give an account. And we are told that the first one brought it and he said, I've added some more to this. And he was rewarded. His mina has gained 10 more and then he was rewarded then the other person also came and said I've gained 5 more but another person said as for me 
I don't want problems here. He cooked up excuses. He hid his own and began to find a way to accuse his master. There are several lessons here regarding the second coming of Jesus Christ and his kingdom. His kingdom. Number one, the nobleman in the parable is Jesus Christ himself. Remember, it is a parable. And a parable must be interpreted or decoded. Jesus is the one who left this world, but who will return as king someday. Hallelujah. He left this world as savior. He's going to return as king and judge. And so he was sending us a message when the disciples thought that when they get to Jerusalem, the kingdom of God will just appear. He used this to teach them that the kingdom is in the future and that I must first die and then I must go and receive the crown and then I will return. And so the parable of the nobleman, the nobleman, the nobleman in the parable represents Jesus Christ who is now gone and his crown king and he's coming back again. Hallelujah. And before he left, the second lesson here is that the servants, the king charges with a task represent all followers of Jesus. Do I have a follower of Jesus here? You are among the servants. You are, you represent the servants. The servant in the story represents the believer in Jesus Christ. And so if you're a believer here, remember that the king is coming back. And before he left, he gave you a very huge investment. A very huge investment in the form of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit or the anointing is the greatest investment of God upon a person. He gave us gifts, abilities, talents to occupy ourselves with and to make profit from it until he returns. Glory be to Jesus. You have been added to the kingdom. Who has been added since you came? The gift of God in you, in the form of the Holy Spirit, the teaching of the word of God, the anointing of God, everything that has been released to you, what trade are you trading with? Because it must result in some souls into the kingdom. What are you doing with your mina? He says, occupy yourself with it until I return. So until he returns, we are not supposed to stop work. Until he returns, we must not stop winning souls. Because when he finally returns, we will be judged according to the work we did with the gift he gave us. Some of you have been gifted minutes of ability to sing. Ability to compose songs, ability to preach the gospel, ability to recite poems, ability to, to, to do um, you know, anything that will bring glory to God, abilities and giftings and talents that have been given to us. What are you doing with that? Ability to communicate with people, ability to sing. Ability to give your talents in the media ministries to promote the vision of the church and to draw people to Christ. What are you doing with it? He says, occupy until I come. He's gone at the moment. He's coming back as king. Read your scriptures very well. We are very close to the time. And he's coming back as king. As I was praying a few days ago, that was what inspired the scripture. He said, it seems my people don't appear to be ready for my coming. And many times in the scripture, he has said, I will come at a time no one knows the day nor the hour. How ready are you when he comes? And what account would you render before him? Whatever we do with the gift in us must draw one soul to the Lord. One person was given that. He went and brought in 10 more. Can you have 10 souls? That will make it to heaven. And one day when the Savior appears, he will say, because of you, these ten friends of yours became born again. Occupy till I come. Tell somebody, occupy till I come. Occupy. Hallelujah. We have been occupied with foolish things. Occupy yourself with the kingdom work until he comes. You have been occupied with shatawale songs. Occupy yourself with the word of God. What are you occupying yourself with? 
He says, the things I've given to you, the abilities. As for me, I'm occupying myself. I just flew, entered the country. I'm occupying myself with the word now. To get someone say, so long as I know I've been gifted to teach the word, I will apply the gift until thousands are saved. Amen. Hallelujah. And don't put a limit on what your gift should bring to Christ. Glory be to Jesus. If there are millions of people in the world, our target should be million people to be saved. Glory be to Jesus. I believe and I wish that we have branches on every street. Because there are people on every street. Occupy till I come. So the servants that the king charges with the task represent followers of Jesus. The third lesson, I've said it in the preaching, but the Lord has given us a valuable commission and we must be faithful to serve him until he returns. The minas were very, very precious. I mean, who would just give you three months salary? Depends on the work you do. Three months salary is a lot. There are some people who work, they are paid 5,000 pounds a month. So three months salary is 15,000 pounds given to them. Said, do something with this until I return. And you decide to just play the buffoonery with it. Just sit down and eat wachi with it. Eat kinky with it. And give excuses. I want you to understand the fourth lesson. That upon his return, he will ascertain the faithfulness of his own people. Please look at Romans chapter 14 verse 10 to 12. Are you ready for the Lord's coming, are you ready? Are you ready? Romans chapter 14. Give someone a microphone, let them read aloud for me. Because you might think it's only in my Bible. Romans chapter 14, and the verse 10 to 12. He is coming back. He would check with every one of us. Every one of us. He gathered all of them and demanded a response. What did you do with the talent I gave to you? Romans chapter 14 verses 10 to 12. Yes. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of we Christ. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. This is not unbelievers. When the one writing says we, this is an apostle writing to the church and says we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. There are three kinds of judgment that will take place in the last days. All believers will appear before Christ to be judged. This very thing Christ is teaching, he will ask what did you do with the gift I gave to you? What did you do with the knowledge of salvation you received? He's not going to ask you whether you attended Bible school. He said, the day you got born again, you receive a message. The message you received and you went to church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, Tuesday house fellowship after house fellowship. The word of God was taught. You take that word and you must teach someone the same word. What did you do with that? Carry on. Let's finish this. 11. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, mm. every knee shall bow to me. And every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of you shall give account for himself to God. So then every one of us will give an account of himself to God. He was not talking about sinners. He's talking about believers after we have met the Lord. We will be judged and examined exactly what happened here. The gift given to you, what did you do with it? Did you trade with it? And what is the profit? The Lord was looking for profit. Hallelujah. What did you do? Every one of us, we are without excuse. There is something we know to do. Whatever we do in church, ultimately, we must lead someone to know the Lord. Hallelujah. We must put our gifts together and make sure that it is getting someone saved. I don't want the applause of men. I want the applause of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What is the point when people clap for you and no one still gets saved? Social service, social, um, social media is good, but let us utilize it well for people to be saved. Let's not get there because we want fame. Let us get there because we want to be faithful. Hallelujah.
Because we have not been called to be famous. We have been called to be faithful. When he came, he didn't say, oh, come on, you've, you've had 10 more. Well done, famous guy. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. Occupy till I come. He's coming again. Hallelujah. Because there's work to be done. John chapter 9 verse 4. There is work to be done. There's work to be done. Say, my father work and I work. He says, the night will come when no man can work. What are you doing with the talent that he has given to you? The fifth lesson is the guy. That servant who is representative of also many, many people in church who belong to the category of the third servant who have hidden their talent in the earth. Do you realize that you are earth? That we are earth. We are from the soil. This body of yours will return back to the ground as it was, but the spirit will return to God who gave it. And you are keeping the talent inside. And you are sitting on it. And you get to church, you can sing. And eh, because of Madeline, me, I don't want to join the choir. You are like this servant. You are providing enough excuses. And excuses, no matter how strong they are, will still not lead to achievement. So this guy thought he has got, so he has to find a way to accuse the boss, accuse the savior, accuse, find reasons to justify himself so that he does nothing in church. So as for me, I'm a common floor member in the church. We don't have such a department in the church. So I'm calm and cool and collected. Me, I sit at the back all the time. We don't have people like that. He's coming back again. What have you done with the talent? He will not accept any excuse. Did you see him there? He will not accept any excuse. What excuses are you cooking at this moment? Some of you are great cooks. And sadly, it is not about any better food to accept excuse. A food called excuse is what you are good at cooking. Come to evangelism. Oh, the weather. It's raining. Are you salt? That if it rains on you, you just dissolve. So you're allergic to the rain. But if it's football, you go on the rain. If it's any other thing, you'll still be on the, in the snow. But let's get on this. Let's get out. It's snowed, but let's go out and preach the gospel. Oh, pastor, you need to be reasonable. What if I sleep and I die? What if I fall down and I collapse? It's too slippery out there. But let it be any other thing. We will still make it. Let it be. They say over time on 26 December, you will go. Sunday over time, you will go. Because it's double pay and it's raining, it's snowing. Whatever, you will break through the weather. You will bind the weather and go. What are you doing with the talent? He says, occupy till I come. That statement still rings. It still holds. The one who made it, he's coming back again. So we represent, we are represented there as the servants who he has given something to every one of us who appear. What account would you give? What investment are you making with the gift? If you decide to sink, are you exercising that skill in the way that when someone hears you, they want to give their life to Christ? When they get to church and you shake their hands as an usher, the power of God moves from you and touches them and makes them feel like men and brethren. What shall we do? How are we serving this God? Church is not entertainment. It's souls that must be saved. At this minute, as I speak to you, some people are dying. Every minute somebody dies, every minute a child is born. And every minute, what are you doing with the talent? Don't give the excuse this guy gave. 
He thought he was justified until the king came and said, I am not accepting any excuse. Let me appraise you on this God we serve. Have you noticed he doesn't accept excuses? In this parable, who, the Lord himself was the one representing himself as the Lord. He said, he's not taking it. Moses tried to give an excuse at the burning bush. The Lord was not taking it. Moses tried to give an excuse for not circumcising his son. The Lord was not taking it. He almost killed him. Elijah provided an excuse. The Lord was not taking it. When he pushed further, he said, you are coming home. It's all right. Elijah will replace you. Ladies and gentlemen, God, just like a football manager, can substitute you. You are not special at all. It's just we are privileged. Occupy till he comes. And sometimes, as I've said, till rapture or casket, it can happen at any time. Those who give excuses, it's the highest level of arrogance to think that you have got another day for yourself. How sure are you that you'll see tomorrow? You are playing with the gift he has given to you. And as for today, me, I'm not ushering. Hey, really? I'm not singing today. Today, today. I'm not manning any equipment. I'm not doing any of those things. I'm even sitting at home. I'm not coming to church. One day he will meet you in your bedroom whilst you are staying and not coming to church. One day he will just appear and say, well, since you are not going to church very often, come home. Let's go home. <laughs> you will see him in your room right there. It's enough now. Why did I put my spirit in you to be sitting down here, keeping it in the earth? Whatever he gave, we must use it. Amen. And that is the lesson there. The other lesson there, which is the fifth lesson. Is that the fifth lesson? The sixth lesson was the fact that when we utilize the gift he has given to us, it increases. The anointing increases. Have you seen the one who went to work with it? When there was results, he gave him more. That's how the anointing builds up. I see people all the time say, they want, they want the anointing. The anointing doesn't work like that. Whatever God gives, when you utilize it, then he finds you faithful and adds more. He won't give you 10 people to lead until you are faithful with the one. Then when you are faithful with one, visiting, praying for them, teaching them, God, the Lord looks on them, then up the anointing that can handle too. And look at these people. He increased the anointing. He increased their capacity. He increased what they can do. And then the Bible says, then he says to the one who was hiding the talent, he said, what even he has? Take it from him. The Lord abhors any form of laziness. And in activity with his anointing. The knowledge you have received. The teaching you have received. One day you hold you responsible. Say, Bishop James preached to you. What did you do with the message? He said, did you, did you know Bishop James? He said, yes. I knew him. Well, he's here. He's here in heaven with you. But he's sitting somewhere. But I'm asking you a question first. Because before you get to where he is, I need to find out whether you can pass from where you are today. Otherwise, you'll be in Zongo. Zongo in heaven. <laughs> you know Zongo? Okay. It's, it's, it's a slum where there's a lot of Muslims. <laughs> Very deprived area. That's a Zongo. <laughs> all the Zongos we know is Muslims who occupy the place. Very deprived, dilapidated areas. Troublemakers. Trouble and trouble and trouble. You will go to every Zongo. <laughs> Before you get there, he will ask you all the gifts I give to you. He said, oh, you didn't give us. He said, I spoke through my servant, taught you many things every week. What did you do with that? Tonight, I want you to reflect. In Jesus' name, the anointing increases when you become faithful. He said, then give him 10 more cities to rule over. 
give him five more cities. He says, even those what they have, we will take it. Those who have and do nothing with it, I will take it away from them. That's the reason why some people start off and they see visions and revelations. They do nothing about it for some time. They only talk about it. I see visions. Very soon, you realize that you no longer see visions. It's been taken because the reason why God was giving you visions is not to show off but to intercede. The prophetic anointing is not for entertainment. When God reveals, he wants you to pay the price in prayer. So people say, I want the anointing of the, of the prophet. Thou art a joker. <laughs> if you sleep, if you sleep, you can't be a prophet. I, I look at young people and calling themselves prophet. I said, have you met the devil before? <laughs> Thou art a joker. They are excited about titles. <laughs> you have to pray. If the Lord shows you anything, instantly you must wake up and pray. So you that love your sleep, after watching Netflix, and then you doze off, now you want to sleep, that's when the Lord comes and says, get up. Pray for the church. Hey, what's the time now? 2.30. <sighs> Father, you understand that you know these things. I've got a lecture in the morning. and this is just... The Lord looks at you like that. And does that for three times. And you no longer hear from God. Because whenever he reveals, the revelation becomes the prayer topic. You can't pay that price. You can't, you, you can't walk in that anointing. Whatever the Lord gives... We must give it out. Amen. That's what the scripture says in Corinthians. That he gives seed to the sower. And bread to the eater. He gives seed to the one who will sow it. If you hoard it, he won't give it to you. That's why genuine men of God, called by God, genuine preachers, they never lack revelation. If you wake me out of sleep, I'll preach another message. Because the more you give out, the more revelations he releases. So don't sit on it. Don't keep it in the napkin and don't keep it in the earth. It is time to serve the Lord with it. Let's get out of here and anybody we see, let's make sure we are getting them to be saved. Utilize the gift that God has given to you because he's coming back again. In the mighty name of Jesus. The seventh lesson as I end is that the enemies who rejected the king, if you read what we have been reading from the Luke chapter 19. The Bible says that as he went to receive the kingdom, there were some people who said, we don't want this one to rule over us. They represent all those in the Jewish nation who rejected Christ whilst he walked on the earth. And it is also applicable to all those, Jews or non-Jews, who still reject the message of Christ. He will come and deal with them. He will come and judge them. The Bible says the Lord shall descend with the voice of an archangel and he will bring judgment and vengeance on all those who don't know God. Tonight, where do you stand? Because you are not going to win that fight against him. Anyone who still denies him today belongs to the category of all these people who rejected him. The Bible says he came unto his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. So all Christ rejectors belong to this category in the account of the people that he will execute judgment on. And the Bible says when he returns to establish his kingdom, he will utterly defeat all his enemies. Revelations 19, 11 to 15. It doesn't pay. To fight against the king of kings and lord of lords. Tonight, are you occupying till he comes? What are you occupied with? What is the dominant thing that is occupying your daily life? Apart from we going to work and come or go to lectures, what are we doing for the Lord? Amen. Who are you talking to to be saved? May we be challenged. May there be a lot of souls on your account. May there be a lot of friends brothers, sisters, cousins, on your account that you use the gift of God in you to teach them the word of God. The knowledge you have acquired every day in church. 
May we use it well because he's coming back again. What investment have you made? What plans are you making towards you, your retirement? It's another message he gave me once I was on the plane this morning. You know, in normal life, we, if you are very normal and you have received very good counsel, you also, when you work, you plan for retirement. So people plan, put money into pension and all that. One day you'll be retired from this earth. What would you do with the life post retirement? Where would you be? Hallelujah. After we have worked, when we retire, we enjoy our labor, isn't it? So what labor are you laboring spiritually that when you are retired, you will be on? What pension would you be on? You know, sometimes I see, especially in Ghana, when you see a lot of posters, funeral announcements, and they say, a life well lived. And I question it, they say, how sure that this is a life well lived? A life well lived. It is only God who will say it is well lived. May it be that when that is said, it is true. That it holds true. Occupy till I come. Because he's coming again. Don't occupy yourself with sin. Occupy yourself with the work till he comes. The faithful servant. Some people may be laughing at him. Say your pastor is not coming. People have even rejected him. People even don't believe in him. We are still working in his, in his name. That's what they would have been telling him. Because the Bible says even the place where he left to go and receive the kingdom. They sent a message to tell him. Don't even try to come back. We won't accept you as king. And today, as we go around preaching the gospel, people will be saying, look, stop disturbing our ears with this guy. He's a historical figure, or he's even dead, some guy. This Jesus is not real. Keep on working. In Jesus' name. Keep on working. I was told that during your evangelism on the Saturday, um, on, the, on the evangelism Saturday, the street evangelism, said that some... Little girl told Pastor Hammond that this dude, this dude you are talking about is dead. <laughs> Stop disturbing us with this dude. Can you imagine? Like a seven-year-old girl. Girl, this is what has, she has been indoctrinated with this. And you that knew enough, what are you saying? The Bible says, to whom much is given, much will be required. You have received a lot in this church, you much will be required. <laughs> Chiquado, much will be required. Preach the word. Look at somebody tell the person, preach the word. Get someone born again. Disciple someone for the Lord Jesus. You know too much. You know too much. Bishop has taught you so much. You have heard so much messages. Preach it now. Use it now. Get someone saved now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, shout, Lord, help me. <laughs> Lift your voice. Let's begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Where do you stand in the message I've just said? Where, where do you stand? I mean, do, do you know the Lord? I mean, when he comes tonight, what, what would you do? What are you occupying yourself with? Till he comes. The instruction is till he comes. Jesus is speaking here. Till he comes. Till he comes. Until he comes. We must be in a state of expectation of his return. Occupy with what I have given to you till I come. Occupy yourself with the instructions to go out and preach the gospel till he comes. Oh, look at the person and tell the person, therefore, occupy till Jesus comes. Don't be occupied with unnecessary things. Don't be, un but don't be occupied with worldly things. Be occupied with the great commission. Be occupied with doing the master's will. May you be the reason. 
whilst thousands get born again. Bring someone to church. Since you came to church, how many hundreds have you brought to church? Bring the hundreds from this Sunday. And for your information, we will be back to church on Sunday at King Henry School at 10 a.m. Make sure that you are occupying yourself with someone with you to church on Sunday. Next week, Wednesday, we will be here again at 7 p.m. But as for you, you will be here at 6.30 to start praying the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you tonight and forevermore. You are blessed with irrevocable blessings to increase, to make disciples, and to influence. See you again. Bye-bye.